Petersburg firm. Um, I actually met them at uh, One Million Cups in St. Petersburg at the Greenhouse um, through introductions there. So I'm very excited to introduce um, Sean Carey of uh, HD Interactive. Thank you, everybody. Here we go. I'm Sean Carey from HD Interactive. Uh, we're a Tampa Bay company, 14 years old. We build websites, apps, games, touchscreen kiosks, uh, museum exhibits, and now virtual and augmented reality projects. What is virtual reality? This guy here is Palmer Lucky. Uh, a couple years ago, he was a teenager in his garage. He had a dream of making a virtual reality headset uh, for gaming. Uh, he made a very nice prototype, showed it off at a lot of conferences, and he recruited a guy named John Carmack, a, a legend in, in gaming development. Uh, pretty soon after that, Mark Zuckerberg and, and Facebook were very interested, and they bought his company Oculus for $2 billion. Some gamers were worried that with Facebook own, owning Oculus and, and this virtual reality company that they're gonna ruin virtual reality and it was just gonna become some kind of social platform. But I don't think that's happening. Uh, Facebook has the resources and smarts to, to make this work for gaming and a lot of other uh, technologies and uses. So what is virtual reality? Science fiction fans have known for a long time. Uh, for over 20 years, we've been watching movies such as Lawnmower Man and The Matrix. We see TV shows with Star Trek Holodeck uh, reading books like Snow Crash, ReamD, Ready Player One. So this is technology that, that we've known about and, and waiting for for over 20 years, wanting to uh, experience this kind of virtual reality. So when people define it, they use the words presence and immersion a lot. Uh, immersion into virtual reality is a perception of being physically present in a non-physical world. So what that means is that when you put on one of these virtual reality headsets, you become teleported into uh, whatever environment you are. So whether it's a jungle or a pyramid or underwater, whatever it is, you feel like you're in that environment. So this whole thing is about tricking your senses, primarily your sight, sound, and touch. I'm gonna to show you a really great example of that here. So how do you experience cardboard? Or how do you experience virtual reality? The first way, the cheapest way, is Google Cardboard. Uh, these are, a lot of people are giving these out for free or you can get them uh, very cheaply. All you do is put your cell phone in here and you can watch 360 videos or download cardboard apps uh, to use with it. The next option is mobile VR. Uh, this is the Samsung Gear VR. It's made by Oculus and Samsung. It uses a Samsung Galaxy phone. They say this phone here is, is almost comparable to an Xbox 360. So when you plug this in and put this on your head, 
it's like having an Xbox 360 virtual reality set on your head. Uh, this is my favorite product uh, in VR at the moment, uh, just because it is mobile and easy to take around and it is very uh, powerful still and can do uh, some amazing experiences. The next level up is the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. Uh, this is an older version of the Oculus Rift here. Um, as, as I said, this Gear VR is totally mobile and easy to deal with. This Oculus Rift has all these cables you have to plug into your computer. So I'm not super excited about that. But the benefit of that is that it's using your computer and not a mobile phone. So primarily for gamers, this Oculus Rift is going to be able to uh, do a lot more extreme um, types of games and, and use your computer's processing a lot better. Uh, next is uh, consoles. So Sony, it got leaked that in November of this year, uh, they're going to be releasing this virtual reality headset uh, for their PlayStation 4. Um, again, main, this is primarily for gamers. Uh, but the other great thing about it is that just like the cardboard, this is going to be a nice, easy way to get virtual reality into a lot of households and get people trying it and, and adopting this technology. Uh, the first type of virtual reality is, is a passive experience. Uh, I mentioned 360 degree videos. We have our little uh, 360 camera rig right there. There's a lot of different variations of these camera rigs you can set up. But when I go back tomorrow and watch this video that I shoot, it feels like you're right here in the auditorium. And uh, if you haven't tried watching a 360 video on a virtual reality headset, I recommend it. Uh, we'd be happy to give you a demo. And then if you want interactivity and play a game or, or do something uh, more interactive, um, there's lots of ways to control the app. Uh, the first is gazing. Just by looking around, if you have three options on a screen, you could look at one of them and it'll select it and after a second, uh, it'll, it'll launch that, that button that you pick. Uh, you can also use speech controls. This one here has a, a touchpad on the side. Other ones have game controllers, hand gestures, and many other accessories. This is insane. So they put me in a room, I put on the Oculus Rift headset, they gave me two controllers, the Oculus Touch controllers, one for each hand, and you can interact with the controllers pretty intuitively and pretty naturally. Uh, there's a trigger in the middle that lets you close your fist and you can lift your thumbs up to replicate moving your thumbs in real time. You can also do this to pull out your pointer fingers. It was pretty real. It actually felt like my fingers were there in virtual reality. And there was also another person in another room with the same setup with their own version of the Rift and their hand controllers. And I could actually see this person inside the VR world. So I could see their hands, I could see their face, and I could hear them inside the headset. And we, would, we could interact with each other. We could play games together. We can throw objects at each other. At one point, we were playing tetherball together. She was hitting the ball, and I was kind of bopping it with my head. Um, there was another demo where I, she was holding a slingshot, and I was pulling it back and firing it. She threw a boomerang, and I kind of like caught it. I was only in there for about like maybe like 10 to 15 minutes, but I really felt like I could be in there all day. And that so that's a good look at what it looks like to interact and, and how excited people get when they do get to interact with this. It's, it's an amazing experience. So applications, obviously gaming is a big one. Uh, watching sports, movies, concerts, documentary, live streaming events uh, are all really exciting in virtual reality. Uh, there's a lot going on with training and simulations, virtual travel and education. Uh, the virtual travel is big, especially, say, uh, elderly or people stuck in hospitals. Uh, there, there's been some good articles lately um, about people that are bringing these headsets to hospitals and other places so that people can uh, get to experience other parts of the world and these uh, just really fun virtual experiences when they're stuck somewhere. And then capturing memories. I mean, traditionally people would take pictures of things and then it, videos get more and more popular. Now with 360 video, 
it, it takes it to a new level so that if you uh, record your wedding reception or a birthday party or, or the birth of your child or an event like this, when you watch it back with the headset on, you feel like you're in that room and you get to relive that moment. And, and it's just the next level from, from watching a video. My favorite moments in virtual reality so far, uh, first was watching a, a live NBA game courtside. I had this headset on, I'm standing right in the center of the court. The people next to me had $3,500 tickets and I got to watch the Golden State Warriors playing right in front of me. Felt like I could almost touch the players, it was amazing. Watching musicians in a private room or on stage with them, again, getting a, an intimate view that you just normally can't get and you feel like you really were there with them. And then face to face with a dinosaur from Jurassic World, that was a huge moment for me too and I love sharing it with other people that when you see this dinosaur come up to you and you're face to face with them people are ducking and they reach and try to touch them and it feels real and I took that off and I've just felt like I've really lived it I, I've been in front of a dinosaur and, and it's just it was an amazing thing and there's been so many great short films and documentaries already produced and so many more all the time and they've even added uh, awards to the Sundance Film Festival and other film festivals for this medium now. Then augmented reality. So this guy here, his name is Steve Mann. A lot of people call him the uh, grandfather or godfather of augmented reality. In 1975, he started building and wearing his own wearable technology. And he had wearable augmented reality glasses all the way in the 70s. This product here that he's wearing that looks like a Google Glass, he made that over 15 years before Google did. And he's got a lot of the patents in this technology and really involved with driving this technology forward. Really neat guy. So augmented reality is a view of the real world whose elements are augmented by computer generated sensory inputs such as sound, video, and graphics. One of the best examples of this, or, or a long time example, is watching football on TV and you see the yellow first down marker. It just looks like it's there. Even when the players are running over it, it's just magically there. And then uh, with webcams and augmented reality, it was about six years ago that I was at a conference and showing off these cards that we would make, that you hold this up to a webcam on your computer and it would make 3D things float in, in, in the air in front of your camera. And then now we do mobile apps with augmented reality and you'd point your camera at something and, and it can uh, do some really cool things. We could demo that to you later. And then now wearable augmented reality. So these new wearable things are like hologram glasses. We get to wear glasses, see holograms in the real world. Some people are starting to call this mixed reality which I do like because, like I said, all the way back from TV, webcams, mobile apps, all these other things have been sharing this term, augmented reality. It's really nice to have a new term, mixed reality, to distinguish what these hologram glasses really are. So a few years back, a company called Meta from Silicon Valley um, made this uh, first um, augmented reality glasses. Uh, these were only in... Um, Big enterprise companies use these, uh, manufacturing companies, uh, laboratories, uh, some medical uses, and they could augment over instructions for putting together engines and, and many other uses. So Meta has been working on building and perfecting this for a while. The same year that the Meta One came out is when the Google Glass came out. Google Glass was a nice try. It was a nice step in the progression of this technology. I didn't get it because number one, putting it uh, with my existing glasses was kind of tricky to do. Number two, you needed an Android phone. And number three, you need to use Google Plus. And, uh, and I am a happy iPhone Facebook user. So I skipped Google Glass. But the little augmented reality thing was just a little window in front of your eye. And that's pretty much all it was at the time. And so it's come a long way since then. So now last week, Microsoft finally uh, release the HoloLens. You can pre-order this on their website now. It ships at the end of this month on uh, March 30th. Just to developers though right now, this is still kind of a, a developer prototype for early adopters. Um, and here's a quick little video showing you. What that
Microsoft HoloLens brings holograms into your real world. Using transparent lenses, spatial sound, and an understanding of your environment, holograms look and sound like they're actually part of the world around you. That is mixed reality. With Microsoft HoloLens, holograms are viewed through the holographic frame centered in the middle of your view. This preserves your peripheral vision so you can move freely and connect and collaborate with the people around you. Holograms in mixed reality don't block out what you can see and hear. This enables you to engage with digital content and tools alongside the objects in your real world. Holograms can be world-locked in a physical location, so you can walk around them, or they can travel with you. You can even hear them in 3D with spatial sound. Microsoft HoloLens is the world's first fully untethered, self-contained holographic computer. With the mixed reality experience of HoloLens, you can stay in the real world and interact with real people as you simultaneously explore 3D in 3D. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, a couple key things about that. The, the HoloLens is a mobile unit like this. You can walk around wearing it. Um, it's a self-contained computer. It runs Windows 10. Uh, again, I'm not super excited about that, but I'll live with it. And, um, and it's, uh, and it's got amazing sensors that map out your surroundings. So if you do want to place things on the wall or, or, uh, interact with things, placing them on your desk or on a table, it's got your whole environment mapped out in, in 3D. So then I mentioned Meta was first. Uh, two days after the HoloLens, Meta released this Meta 2, and you can pre-order this now. This product is $950. The HoloLens is $3,000 right now. But you see this one's got a, a cable on it, so it's kind of like this deal, that you're tethered to your computer. But they both have pros and cons, and the, the Meta 2, they do a lot more business and productivity things. Uh, you can interact with your, your email, web browsing, taking notes, coding with it. You can uh, play your music, move all these windows, very minority report-like. But then there's still a lot more it can do with virtual conference calls and, and I can take a 3D model of something and virtually send it across to you and you could be holding and seeing the same thing. There's a lot that this product can do, but it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And then uh, finally with augmented reality, there's a company called Magic Leap. Uh, they're a South Florida company in uh, Fort Lauderdale. They, um, have not shown us what their product looks like yet, and they haven't released a release date yet. But they're doing it a lot different. Instead of having these holograms floating in front of your eyes on these glasses, they're projecting right onto your eyeballs. And it sounds kind of crazy, but they claim that it's gonna be gentler and easier and more comfortable for your eyes and your brain to do this, plus it fills your whole field of vision. So they've been really secretive about their product, but they have released one or two little videos. Here's one of their videos. Again, this is taken straight out of the, uh, the glasses themselves. So you can see what it looks like. See a little floating robot in the air there. And if you know about 3D, you can see that that table leg occluded in front of it too. So it's really pretty fancy how this works. And, uh, and then here you are in, in real environment, and you can see floating holograms, floating solar systems, and and uh, and in your whole field of vision, you can have these holograms all around you. I think this company has a big chance of, of being the winner in this space. Uh, Google and a few other people have teamed up to, in total, they've gotten 1.3 billion dollars of investment and kind of cheering for them. But we're going to try all the products though. And uh, that's my presentation. Thank you, everybody.